Hello, I'm Mary Spicer, and thank you for joining me for this episode of Behind Fashion. In this unprecedented time, the fashion industry, like so many industries, is in distress. Around the world, we have gathered to demand racial and social justice. No industry is exempt, and the hard work must continue. At the time of this recording, Donald Trump has not conceded to President-elect Joe Biden and continues his false claims that the election was rigged. The tension and stress felt across the nation between this election, the effects of a worldwide pandemic and global warming is very, very overwhelming. And there's not a single person in America who has not been affected by all of this. So that's why today I would like to introduce all of you to someone that I call the fashionable stress whisperer, Bonnie Pierce. Welcome, Bonnie. Hi, Mary. <laughs> Thank you for I'm so, me. Oh, I'm so happy to have you on here. I know you're busy. You have you were like, I have one hour. Okay. <laughs> we're, gonna, we're just gonna shoot that gap of one hour because I don't know what's gonna happen tomorrow. <laughs> Bless you. Thank you. I'm just so honored to be here. Thank you. Well, before we talk about all things stress and fashion, I do want to check in with you. There's a pandemic going on. Um, how are you and your family doing? Those numbers are rising. Yeah, thank you for asking. Yeah, my family, we are all, we're healthy and safe. I'm really grateful to be able to say that. So we're all doing well. Thank you. How's your family? You good? My, you know, my family, yes. finger, fingers crossed. Well, I think I think my sister had it. I think my niece had it. I have family in Connecticut. My niece is a nurse and works uh, frontline. She was in Boston in the beginning. Um, and thankfully everyone is fine. My mother's in Connecticut, um, friends in New York, uh, for the most part have been okay. We've lost a couple wonderful people in the fashion world. Um, you know, it's a tough time. It's, it's a tough time. And, um, I, I think it's an introspective time and that, to turn that frown around, we have the ability <laughs> to talk to each other um, a little bit more in depth of, of what we do and, and how we go through the day to day. And you're such a big part of my life that I had to bring you in. <laughs> I love you. Now you, unlike me, were born and raised in Boulder, Colorado. And you graduated from CU Boulder, where my youngest is graduating this year. And um, then you went to LA to pursue a career in performing. Can you tell me about that? Yes, absolutely. Um, yeah, so born and raised in, in Boulder and, and I love it here. Um, and from a very, very young age, um, my life really started to revolve and center around everything music and, and everything performing and I, I really kind of channeled um, that passion into, into like this really wide variety of outlets, which is so great that Boulder has that to offer. You know, I focused on, on musical theater or opera or jazz and, and that kind of launched me into, um, into studying music at CU here in Boulder. And kind of during that same time, specifically in college, um, I got connected with an acting agency here in Denver and then a modeling agency here in Denver. And so that just kind of spiraled and, and added that all in. Um, so I started to pursue those kind of ventures as well. Um, and I learned pretty quickly. I really loved being on set. Um, I, liked, I liked being a part of kind of the, the buzz of, of the industry. Um, it was such a trip to, you know, film a commercial and then and then weeks later see it on tv and oh you know so exciting <laughs> um so then after i graduated from cu um i moved to la to kind of follow the dream um and la was was interesting um i would say there's so much that i'm grateful for for my time in los angeles i don't think i would be the person i am today if i if i hadn't taken that leap to go um but mostly it was really challenging. <laughs> it was yeah. really challenging, um, both professionally and, and specifically personally. I think it was a lot to ask of myself and, and from, you know, just as a young girl to, to maintain and, and to build confidence um, in kind of that constant sense of, of competition 
um, where you're always feeling, or it's easy to fall into feeling that you're you're less than or you aren't good enough. And um, kind of by the end of my time there, I just felt like I was losing pieces of myself. You know, I, I didn't, I wasn't at a time in my life yet where I really could hold my own without trying to fit into molds that that just really weren't right for me. So after a lot of hard life lessons <laughs> and a lot of personal growth, um, I, I took the move back to Boulder and, and really focused more on connecting on a deeper level with myself and with self-worth. So that was, wow. a, that was a long explanation. <laughs> no, not at all. And really any of us, uh, I imagine New York can be very similar as well. The competition is high. The things that people say, whether they're producers or what have you, if, if I find that some of them aren't quite as kind as they could and should be. Um, yes. <laughs> you know, it, it only takes a moment to just be a little bit kind and have a little bit of patience. Um, but what, what, what was the biggest lesson that you feel you learned in LA? What was your biggest one? There's so many. Um, I think <laughs> the biggest lesson I learned um, that really stands out to me today, I guess, is, is learning that you always have a choice and you can always choose to do differently. Um, you know, you can choose to act in a way that is just more aligned with who you are and you can choose to stand up for what you believe in and you can choose the path that brings you self-worth and self-love. Um, you know, even if that path isn't one that, that perhaps other people think you should take. Um, kind of mm -hmm. towards the end of my time there, I felt really trapped. Um, you know, I'd been pursuing this this lifestyle, this dream that that really was kind of tearing down my self esteem a bit, brick by brick, and mm -hmm. and I was also drowning in a relationship um, where I had really um, committed too much and really dove in kind of too deep that I felt like I couldn't step out of it. You know, I couldn't see any options. I couldn't see my choices because I had just convinced myself that I was too deep. There was only one way to go. And it was just to trudge forward. Oh, um, I know. <laughs> so I felt like, you know, I had like handed this power, all of my choices I had handed over to a relationship. I just let go of any of my personal strength. And, and then I'm just so lucky to be loved by a mother who is so wise and kind and strong because it was really in, in this kind of dark -er time in my life that, that I was able to call her. And she, you know, words straight from her mouth were, you know, you always have a choice. And she showed me that I had options and and they're not always glamorous or pretty <laughs> and 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 it wasn't by any means an easy choice and I think our choices certainly will not always be easy but there are always choices there and I think when you give up those choices you give up your power um so so leaving Los Angeles I felt like I was really able to kind of reclaim a, a bit of that wow I I have to say okay so much to unpack there really there was really <laughs> stuff in there now i love that that you said your choices are your power and quite often in class you'll point out that yoga is an exercise in leaning into the discomfort yeah and i don't know where we got the notion that everything is comfortable and easy or that it should be it isn't and leaning into that discomfort, you know, it's a big learning lesson. And I think it's a huge part of taking that power ourselves, saying, yes, there's pain and I'm uncomfortable, but I'm going to lean in and it's mine. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that's like, that's the good stuff. Like that's the nectar, right? When you are moving through that, it might not feel like it at the time, but like I look back and, and maybe you can relate, but those times where you are in it, and you are moving through it and you're growing through it, like that's what defines so much of how, who I feel I am and I have become. And, 
And it's moving through that discomfort in order to, to achieve this like positive change on the other side, to learn more about yourself, to, to flourish and grow. So we yeah. love the hard times because <laughs> they teach <laughs> us so much. They teach us so much. Well, it's true. We always, we, we have an idea in our head when we're young, this is the path I'm going to go. This is how I'm going to do it. This is the direction I'm going to take. And I really don't know anyone who has stayed on the path that they started in at all. And (laughs) I think it's very interesting. When I met you, you were teaching in-person yoga classes in Boulder. So pre-pandemic by a few years, Um, the the pandemic threw everything to the wind. You know, everything stopped and um, you created Bonnie B Yoga and started, and I, I gotta tell you what a lifeline, thank you so much. So what led to the decision for you to go out on your own? Oh, well, it was such, gosh, it was just such a shift, wasn't it? Um, <laughs> moving from, you know, these, these mat to mat, sweaty, hot, packed classes. And, and then all of a sudden I'm in my living room talking to myself. You know? <laughs> um, okay, I got to stop you right there because people need to know if you've been in a Bonnie class, the, the room should fit. 30 and we've had 45 and we are literally (laughs) next to each other. I was always jazzed up to be in those classes. Like people had to leave. People were turned away. Those classes were so packed. And um, my husband was kicked in the head and, you know, and we (laughs) we still go. It was kind of the fun of it. It's like, it's okay. My head's okay. Oh my goodness. Packed. Bless you. It was, I mean, so much fun, so much fun. And, and just such a a huge shift to, to being alone and, and teaching. But, but what really I began to realize pretty quickly is that being live in a zoom class, you know, I still feel that connection. I still feel that energy. So like when the yoga studios closed, Mm -hmm. it took me about like, I don't know, two minutes, two days, maybe to realize that that I couldn't just stop teaching yoga. I guess I always thought that I just could, but I couldn't, you know, it was something that I just felt like I needed to do. You know, I needed to be teaching to feel personally connected, to feel nourished, to feel alive and grounded <laughs> and and optimistic and, and sane. Um, and I think at that same time, more importantly, I, I also really believed and, and I still believe um, that yoga is healing. You know, that community is, is so essential for us to thrive and that movement is this just magical form of medicine. And so I just, in that, you know, few moments felt like if I stopped teaching, I would be really doing a disservice to, to my own health and wellness, but really I'd be neglecting this incredible community, this just phenomenal community. Um, I would be neglecting their health and wellness that, you know, I really had, had loved cultivating and being a part of for, for so many years. So I moved online because it just felt like I needed to move online. You know, I just started Zoom classes and I was so nervous. Um, but from the very first minute, it just, I felt alive again, you know, seeing the faces and the names of all of these people, yourself included, um, that I love and cherish. Um, and then just being able to move and breathe together, you know, no, we're not in the same room, but we're still doing it together. And that's been such an anchor for me during these very strange months, you know, knowing that each week there's this gift of these hours where there's healing and there's laughter and there's strength. Um, yeah, it's been such a, such a bright light. And I, and I guess beyond that, um, one of the main reasons I really love this online model is I love that it's so accessible, you know, that people can hop in a few minutes before class. They don't need to commute or park or struggle to find a spot in class or get kicked out or get kicked in the face, you know, whatever. <laughs> um, and, and I'm just so passionate that yoga be accessible and that it be sustainable and that it be inclusive. Um, and in doing these classes, 
you know, online, you get to guarantee that they're available on, you know, not only monetarily on like a sliding scale contribution, give what, give what you can take whatever you need, you know, and, you know, any truly, truly any amount that is so welcome. And, and people can join from all around the world, you know, nobody's excluded from being able to practice yoga. And, yeah. and I just feel like no one should be excluded from healing. So yeah. once again, well, a long explanation. <laughs> no, no, I, and, you know, and in some of the classes I do have to say live is different and everybody's different. So I think one of the takeaways that we'll have, assuming that, you know, we'll be back out and trotting along, uh, next year is that some people may prefer live on zoom or recorded on zoom personally i'm alive on zoom and then live in person like i do like the live thing i like it if you mess up i like it if you're having a bad day we'll get to talking a little bit more about that or or a great day like we are interacting and and that's really really important with yoga and so you came out with bonnie b yoga what does the b stand for Oh, it's so funny. Your middle um, name? What? No. So, oh God, it's so random. It's so arbitrary. So I have a, I have a B tattoo. Oh. Um, that, how do I start the story? Okay. When I s- decided to kind of step back from, from modeling, I was like, ah, this will be a great time to get a tattoo, right? You don't have to worry about covering it up, whatever. Um, so one of my brothers, Brian, Um, he has quite a few tattoos. And so I just thought it would be really special, right? If the first one that I got was a matching one with him. And luckily he was amenable to that. (laughs) He's much cooler than me. So it's it's a big thing that he was willing to do that. So, um, you know, kind of after a bit of back and forth, we decided on getting matching Bs, um, truly just because our first names start with the letter B. And, (laughs) And so... So really my love for, for bees started out as just kind of this sweet reminder of family and connection. Um, and then it just spiraled from there. Like right away, people started to notice the tattoo and you know, this nickname Bonnie B or even just B, um, it just kind of started to pop up and, you know, for birthdays or holidays, people were giving me like bee mugs and, you know, earrings or whatever. Um, and then at that point I was like, okay, if this is going to be my thing, like, I got to know something about bees. So, <laughs> so I started um, just kind of like, you know, poking around and seeing um, what I could learn. And, and it was so great because everything that I kind of learned about them just felt like it really aligned um, with the person that I am and, and really with the person I'd like to continue to grow into. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, bees, bees are, you want to hear something about bees? Sure. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was like, what things? What things about bees? <laughs> so bees, bees are remarkable. Um, they're said to symbolize um, like community, brightness, and and personal power. Right? They're like there's three big words, and so they have really strong like ties to the sun, sunlight, warmth. Um, is kind of the the bee vibe. Um, and as you know, they travel from flower to flower, and they spread this nourishing growth to everything that they touch. Um, beyond that, they can travel astonishing distances every day. Um, and they can also carry up to like 300 times their body weight. So they're very strong. Wow. Um, what else can I tell you? A bee's honeycomb represents the heart chakra. So just this sweetness of life. Um, yeah. And, and just they symbolize goddess energy, right? They have the queen celebration and then kinship, how they all support each other. They really embody this beautiful idea that when we all, we all rise when we support one another, you know, they all work together. So wow. I love bees. <laughs> That's so why. Your, your brother, Brian, does he do yoga with you as well? Brian does not yet. Maybe oh. someday. Um, but I have, I have two brothers and my eldest brother, Kevin, does practice and my mom who you already heard a little bit about but anyone who knows me knows how much I love my mom Cindy um she practices most days as well wow okay I don't I don't know I should look for Cindy and be like hi Cindy (laughs) yes oh my god I would love that (laughs) she would love that too (laughs) I love you know when we go to your classes you have you share at the beginning of class 
the introspection about something of that week. And I have to tell you every single time I'm like, yeah, me too. Like, I don't know if it was that week, but you can relate to everything that you're talking about. And again, I love that connection of, I know what's happening right now, what's going on in your brain to some degree. Um, And would it be possible for you to share um, what you were kind of mulling over this week? What was some of your thoughts from this week? (laughs) So many thoughts. Um, Well, I think just like tied into, I don't know, tied into perhaps image and fashion. um, I suppose what I've been thinking about is kind of the idea of how would I say appearances? I think especially when it comes to yoga or anything. Um, but but with yoga, it's when you really break it down, like this physical yoga practice that we do, it's it's really just making shapes with your body, you know. And yet, for some reason, we get so attached and like transfixed on um, what we think these shapes need to look like, or I would say also what we think we need to look like in the shape, right? Um, But I think the truth is, right, in the long run and in our lives off the yoga mats, it really doesn't matter at all what any of these shapes look like. You know, it's it's honestly just who you are, the person that you are and the person you choose to be within the shape that really matters. You know, you could have the most exquisite, oh, jaw-dropping, awe-inspiring yoga practice, and you could have a body that you know, it is chiseled from marble and, and it just doesn't really mean anything if you're not a kind person when you step off of your mat, right? It's, the shapes are just shapes. They're an outlet to go deeper. Um, mm-hmm. But the way that you show up in, in the shapes, um, I really think can just be this beautiful reflection of how you show up outside of the shape and in the world, you know, just taking the yoga that you practice on the mat and actually applying it um, in the world outside. Yeah, no, and I mean, that's some of the things that I love. Like, so earlier this morning we were in class and you were saying, so fall out, what's gonna happen? You know, and I'm always like, like, oh, and I'm like, falling, because in my head, you, you have to push a little bit more, um, always test yourself. I feel like fashion shows are kind of like yoga, you know? in the sense that we have to be able to turn on a dime, right? We need to, oh, the model didn't make it. Oh, the model showed up and her hair was cut. Oh, you know, (laughs) there's a storm outside and we're going to just be on hold for a moment. You know, the things that you would never believe would happen, happen. And that's just every single show. And, you know, things that I do are high stress. You know, my shows are 250K or more and for a 12 minute show. And so, you know, um, that it's high stress and, you know, it's so important to come to your class. I know other people with high stress positions are there, whether there's sports people, we have a lot of people in sports here in Colorado, especially Boulder, um, as well as financial and other things. So how does yoga help manage stress? I know how it helps me, but how would you explain that? Sure. Oh, it's a, it's a big question and a great question. Um, there are myriad ways in which yoga manages stress. And, and I feel like you, we could talk for hours and days, you know, just about that. And, and the truth is, I mean, you can read millions of studies and watch so many videos about that. So I guess I'll just, I'll just keep it to my perspective. Um, so on like a, a very basic physical level, right. When we're stressed out, that causes tension in your body, right? It causes tightness and, and discomfort. You clench up, you, you round in, you, you hold things a little bit tighter, jaw tight, headache, you know, all of those things. And yoga and, and other movement practices as well, they, they not only encourage, you know, the stretching and the opening of these tighter areas, but they also catalyze um, the release of endorphins, which are, you know, these natural hormones that make you feel more at ease. Um, so I guess even beyond that in the physical practice itself can, can be seen as, as a form of kind of moving meditation. You know, the poses that we take can often be really physically challenging. And, and in order to, to engage in them, to stay in them, to be in them, you need to, to focus your concentration on 
that one task at hand. So that kind of allows kind of the other thoughts or worries or laundry lists or anxiety, you know, the things that are going on to, to take a step back, to go into the background. Um, so it's just this focus and, and calming of your mind, giving a huge percent of, of your brain kind of this break. Um, yeah. And I guess- I definitely, like, I love your classes. I, so I have something to say about that. Your classes are quite challenging. As much as you want them to be, I mean, you can't make me do anything. Um, but I, for the first 10 minutes, I'm thinking about the laundry list. And sometimes you can catch me, like, we'll be somewhere else. And all of a sudden, the laundry list comes back up and I fall out. Like, I can see when it's affecting um, my focus. So I love the attention to focus that you have in your classes because you, you quickly get rid of all of those things um, getting into some of those shapes that you like to call them. Now, I know that some people would call it bunk, taking care of yourself, you know, your, your mental and physical health. It's all that, what did they call it? Hippy dippy, <laughs> what they say. It's like, why, why do they still say that when it's obvious that people, when they're taking care of their bodies through some form of exercise, why do you think that happens still? Oh, I don't know, Mary. I think... <laughs> Maybe just like culturally, I suppose here, um, you know, we're told from a young age to, to toughen up, you know, when you're hurt, you rub some dirt on it, um, not show people how you're actually feeling and, and to present as, as bulletproof or untouchable and, and these kind of ideas of how we should, should show up in the world, you know, they sink in. And so we hesitate to open up, to be vulnerable, to embrace our feelings, um, to really celebrate the ways in which we care for ourselves and others. But I, I do, I feel the shifting and I hope it continues to shift. You know, I think that there's been a really great movement um, towards, you know, self-love, self-worth, self-kindness. And I think that we're shown more and more every day that, that when we pair the sense of strength um, that we've learned our whole lives, but we pair it equally with this really beautiful, sweet softness um, that we find this really genuine alchemy, you know, this kind of magic that's that's been there for us to discover all along. Um, we just weren't really looking for it. Um, yeah. So I don't know if that, that quite answered your question, but I think, well, I think that's I why. think, you know, when, when we're watching The Simpsons, and Marge is like, you shove it way down deep inside. <laughs> that's the best. You know, and you laugh. You know that that's actually what is silly. Do not shove it way down deep inside. <laughs> yeah. But now, so, and that comes into some other things of like self-love. You're a model. You and I have tried to work a couple times. The schedules have not worked out yet. Uh, fingers crossed for the future. But after your experiences in LA, how do you suggest we navigate this world with social media and everything else and still continue with self-love. How, how do we do that? <sighs> Ooh, my journey to self-love has had a lot of ups and downs. And I think, honestly, it still has a lot of ups and downs and it probably always will have a lot of ups and downs. I think for me, finding self-worth comes from, from this foundation of first really knowing yourself. Um, and knowing yourself deeply and forgiving yourself deeply. I think if you really take the time to take that deep dive just into you, um, who you are presently, um, who you've been in the past, I, I don't, I think if you really take that time, it's impossible to not come out loving yourself more fully, right? So when, when I feel like I'm struggling, it can be really helpful for me to, to actually, this is going to sound so cheesy, but it's very helpful for me, um, you know, to just honestly close your eyes. And, and, and I just envision myself in when I was younger, you know, in these times, this past me where I felt lost or hurt or scared. And I really try to see that. And then I can envision me as I am now, just just offering forgiveness and love to, to that past version of myself, just the most loving embrace, the most forgiving embrace. And, and I think in that it's, it's telling yourself, right. That it's going to be okay. 
and you're going to get through it because, hey, look, you've already gotten through it, right? And and it's just this beautiful kindness from self to self. And kindness in general, I think, is, is truly the greatest gift that we can ever give. Um, I think it begins with ourselves and then that spirals outwards. Um, so I think self-knowledge and self-forgiveness um, breeds self-worth. I, yeah, I think um, being kind and being vulnerable mm -hmm. is actually an incredible strength. Absolutely. Uh, because it's just too easy to shut down and uh, close everything off and, and not feel or, or what we would call, you know, facing up to what's going on, um, leaning in when it's uncomfortable. Now, uh, we talk, I, and we could talk all day, we talk about all of this stuff at the beginning of your class, at the end of class. I, I mean, it's, it's, it's mental, it's physical, it's wonderful. And you have classes on your website, Bonnie B Yoga. I've seen people, Hawaii, Costa Rica. I, like I'm hoping I might maybe ski. Maybe you'll see me from whoo, an hour away, you know? <laughs> but so anybody can come on here and they can attend from anywhere. Is that correct? Yeah, and you know, that's actually, that's been one of the sweetest parts of, of all of this, of teaching via Zoom is, is you get to see students who have moved to different parts of the country or different parts of the world, you know, and, and you have the chance to reconnect and, and connect with them live again every week. And that, oh my gosh, that's been so soul nourishing. You know, these classes, they're open and available to everyone, no matter how near or far we may physically be. Right, you still get to connect in community together. It's really nice. okay. I love community. What if I'm feeling salty and I don't want to be with other people? <laughs> <laughs> or I just want my group. Like, can I do a private class like me and 10 of my closest friends or, you know, or just me? <laughs> oh my goodness. Yes, absolutely. Um, you know, I offer private classes and, and small, small group classes, obviously that's, you know, constantly <laughs> shifting, but that can be a small Zoom classes, anything like that. Um, corporate yoga, the whole gamut. So, so yes, Mary, I would be delighted any salty day to spend time with you. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. And it's Bonnie B Yoga. I'll say it again at the end, but, uh, and Bonnie, we could talk for hours, but I do try to keep it to 30 minutes. <laughs> it's hard. I, I, it's I hard because you. there's, there's a lot to talk about. There's so much stress right now. It's really, really important that people take care of themselves. If, if we're at home, you can take a Zoom class. You can, you can meet Bonnie. Everybody can come on the class with you and me. You know, go to Bonnie B Yoga. I'm there. What, it, Monday, Thursday? Is it Wednesday? Saturday, Monday, Sunday. Thursday. Monday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday for group classes, right? Yeah. I, I just keep coming, so. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I'm here every day. Sometimes I'm making shapes and sometimes I'm like, nah, that's fine. <laughs> but it's really important to, to be with that community and to see you. And thank you so much for taking the time to come on thank Behind you. Fashion with me. Thank you for having me. It was just such a delight. I just love you endlessly. This is such a treat. Thank you. <laughs> and I always learn something new with you. I love it. Thank you. Bye. See you at yoga. Yay. <laughs> And thank you all for attending this week's Behind Fashion series with my guest, Bonnie Pierce, model, actress, singer, and amazing yoga instructor, who I like to call the fashionable stress whisperer. <laughs> you can find out more about Bonnie and to join her classes with me as well, www.bonniebyoga.com. That's B-O-N-N-I-E-B-E-E-Y-O-G-A bonniebyoga.com. To stay up to date on upcoming behind fashion shows, as well as access to previous episodes, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Behind Fashion with Mary Spicer. If you don't want to see any more like this and you'd rather do a podcast, um, Behind Fashion with Mary Spicer is on Stitcher, Spotify, Google, Apple, iHeart, and SoundCloud. 
it's under two weeks until Thanksgiving. Oh my gosh, we're all gonna be with family, whether it's through Zoom or on the phone or our small grouping in our home, but that means it's busy and we've got a lot going on. So for the rest of November and through December, I'm gonna change up Behind Fashion and I'm gonna do what I call Behind Fashion 2. It's a series each week, you'll have one of a two minute segment and it's gonna be on my YouTube channel. I'll also share it on um, Facebook as well. So don't miss out and subscribe today to Behind Fashion. All the best to you and yours.